Good morning. My name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a human being who has found himself in some very strange situations, being targeted, and Morgellons, and V2K, and all the other crazy stuff. Um, I, I had quite a day yesterday, and the day before. Um, thanks to the love, and compassion, and care, and wondrous, miraculous kindness of someone I know, uh, I was able to, uh, see I didn't even tell you guys this, when I went to Gravesend and the boat got stuck on the ground, what happened was I had got a rope wrapped around the propeller, and I was praying and praying, dear God, dear Jesus, please just let me get this boat home, don't let me sink this boat, don't let me break the boat in some way that I can't fix, please. So, when we cut off the ground and I floated away and the motor ran, I had no idea. And the next day when I got the boat home and I started the motor up and it, and I put it in gear, it conked out. And I'm like, uh-oh, tried it again. Put it in reverse, it went conked out. Uh-oh. So I'm like, oh God, I'm looking at the motor, I'm looking at everything, I'm like, what could it be? It could be the transmission is no good. But he told me when he gave me the boat, we replaced the transmission in 2016 with a brand new V drive, which was like $2,500. So I'm thinking, gee, if it's not the transmission, because it's new, it has to be something wrapped around the prop, because that's what happens to boats. And so eventually I got the courage up to uh, put on my wetsuit. <laughs> Put my dinghy in the water and go and I'll drop this down there. Down there. In that. Below that. Now under there is the, the, the prop. The, the, the rudder is there, right? Those two things are the exhaust manifolds. And then alright, when you get in the water, you put your leg on the edge of the boat, right here. By my foot. This length here is how far under the boat the prop is, okay? The prop is, you know, almost three feet, however long my legs are, under the boat. And so I go on, first I put my foot, I'm like, is there something right? And I'm feeling around, yes! I was so excited, yes! There's a rope on the prop, thank God, it's only a rope! So. I took my knife, I went in there again, and, and I couldn't get myself to go under the water. It was so frightening. I was just getting more and more afraid, and I'm hyperventilating. And so I managed once to get under there, and I cut one loop, and I cut it. And I got the boat moving. The propeller was moving, but I couldn't go back down. I was just terrified. I was so terrified. And then the water got, like, there's days right now, right now you can... Probably not in this video, and not without the sun, but right now you can see about three, four inches down. On the day I went down, you could actually see the, the uh, rudder. So you could see about eight, 12, 15, you know, two feet, whatever. Uh, and then every day beyond that, the water is brown because they're releasing the, the poop, and you, know, you don't want to go in this. The big signs tell you, don't drink the water, don't swim in the water, don't fish in the water, don't eat the fish, and don't go in a boat in the water, in the rain. Um, anyway, I'm losing my mind, my place here. So, this wonderful woman, you know, helped me out and sent me some money, and I hired a diver. I, I called all these marinas. I called all these service places, I, call, I called divers, and I got quotes, one was $2,000, one guy wanted $1,500, one wanted $400, one guy wanted $250, one guy wanted $200, and I talked him down to $150, and so I managed to get him to come. Now, <laughs> this guy shows up, right, in his car, and, he's, he's, and I'm calling him, I'm like, where are you? And he drives up and he's like, I'm not going to park here where you want me to park. I got, all, I got all this heavy. He says, what he looks at me, he says, I'm carrying heavy weight. And I have to be careful. And, uh, I'm like, 
thinking to myself, what's this guy, a freaking drug dealer? He's supposed to be a diver. Bring him weight here. Anyway, <laughs> this is my mind. So he follows me, and where does he park his car? He parks his car right in front of the office, in front of the cameras of the people who've been calling the police all the time. So I tell him, look, you just parked your car in front of the one place. I didn't want you to park it, but fine. Just be, feel safe, okay? He says, all right, let's go see the boat. Oh, first, well, I'm, I'm standing next to the car. He's like, what's in your hand? I'm like, nothing. What's that? A, a radio. I'm talking, you know, my, like, oh, well, well, I got to be careful. My security. So he's got this beautiful young girlfriend. The kid's like 24 years old. And he, he, he was a nice guy, but he was really paranoid. So he comes down here. He picks up a big rock and, like, wraps it in a cloth. It's like, do you need this rag? I'm like, no. And he checks out my whole boat, you know, everywhere. Make sure there's nobody else here. Then he goes off. He says, all right, I'm going to give me the money. I'm going to go get my equipment. I said, what are you, crazy? Go get your stuff. I'm here with the money. <laughs> okay, yeah. So he goes, and I'm sitting up there waiting, 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 praying, waiting, praying. Finally, he comes back with his tank, and he's in his wetsuit. He looks like, you know, flipper flopper. <laughs> And he's got all his gear and he says, all right, this is what we're going to do. He's telling me what to do. Everything. Stand over here. Get this. You know, stand back. Like, hold this thing and don't let it. Anyway, he goes down, splash. He leaves his tank over there. His wife's guarding the tank. He jumps in, sploosh, comes back three minutes later and hands me the offending rope. I don't know if we can see this rope. Where can we see it? Can we see it? Yeah, look at this. Ah, from Gravesend. This was the offending rope. I couldn't do it. I was just too scared. He said, nylon rope will never come off. You have to cut it. And that's what this is. Anyway, he jumps. He comes out of the water. I help him. He hands me the knife. Let me hear it drop on the deck. Crash. Okay. <laughs> it's like 24 years old ordering me around. Okay, man. Whatever you say. I help him up out of the thing. He's like, all right. Thank you very much. I gave him, you know, I gave him the money before he went in the water. That was the thing. Um, so he leaves. He writes me a text message. You know, tell your friends if you ever need any help, give me a call. Nice guy, really paranoid. I thought I was paranoid, man. Anyway, so I get up yesterday, uh, Sunday. Sunday, I went on that journey to look for for a place, and that one place with those birds. I might be able to pull that one off. There's a, a, you know, an old pier there, but there's stuff sticking out of it. And when I pulled up to it, I was trying to pull up to it to stop and tie the boat up and get off and look around. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I was too freaked out. And I almost crashed the back of my boat. Thank God I got these tires on here. Like this. The tires are going against the wall. And I'm going, dear God, you know, Anyway, so while I'm out there yesterday, I, um, I'm going along and I find two big sheets of foam. I don't know if you can see them over there, which is exactly what I needed. More foam so I could build more docks. Uh, I had asked God, you know, please help me to find the stuff that I need to do this. And so there they are floating in the water. And I'm like, what am I going to do? First, I, I go buy it. I'm like, I can't pick that up. But how am I going to get it? It's over there. By the, I can't put the boat there. So then I go back. I'm like, all right, you know what? It's Sunday. There's nobody moving on the channel. It's just me. I stop the boat in the middle of the channel. I throw the Bruce anchor, which I took off the sailboat. This big-ass 40-pound anchor. And I tie it to the throw it in. Oh, it goes down. <laughs> like 20 feet I tie it up I get in the dinghy I blow up my dinghy <laughs> my poor dinghy it will not hold air I patched patched and patched and put glue in there and put foam in there and, and latex and I can't figure out what's wrong with it it doesn't make bubbles in the in the water it may just be the the, the valves because I don't have covers for the valves but anyway I get in the dinghy I roll over to the styrofoam, I put a rope through it with a knife, poof, tie it to my boat, and I roll back to my boat, and this time, now, now at this point, because I only put one anchor, the boat will pivot on the anchor, and however much rope there is, and it will move, 
and I'm like, oh, and my boat is floating towards these pilings, sticking out these jagged pilings like two inches, four inches out of the water. So I had to push the boat by hand off of the pilings and I'm pulling the anchor rope trying to get me over there. Finally, I got away from the dangerous pilings and <laughs> put the thing in reverse and <laughs> spun her around and went back on my way. So that was Sunday. Oh, after that, after all that, I came home and started building more docks. Um, and then, it's the, the, across the way, I don't know if you can see it from here, over there, there's a uh, uh, fireman fishing. That's where they fixed some old fire trucks. And they love to fish over there. It's really cool. Um, nice guys. And so, where was I? Uh, yeah, so yesterday, I get up, the day the police are supposed to come, and I get up, and I go to my thing, and I forgot my wallet, I forgot everything I needed, no money, no ID, nothing, so I can't buy groceries, I can't buy screws in the hardware store, I come back here, and who's here, but the police are here, uh, four or five cops on the land, three guys with weed whackers whacking out the weeds so they got a path to get to the boats they had cut the chain off the fence and there were two more cops in a boat in a city boat um putting notices on the boats so i talked to them they were actually very nice homelessness assistance unit um but they were like look on the 31st the contractors are coming they're going to make two thousand dollars a boat and you guys are going to get fined and the boats are going to be gone so the city's not playing around we're being really nice but you know so since they're the homeless outreach thing i said look is there any way they're like what are you going to do i'm like well if i i'm either going to find a place for the boats or i'm going to have to give them away and go to the shelter and they said well why don't you come with us we made a bunch of phone calls and talk to some city agency or, or BRC or whatever it is that, that deals with homelessness and it's the agency the city has contracted with. There's DHS, Department of Homeless, Homelessness Services, and they have shelters and then there's this thing and there's other shelters that are privately run, uh, safe havens they're called. And so I tell them my story and they're very nice and uh, they say, look, we can get you housing your wife is going to have to come in separately because she doesn't have her diagnosis, she doesn't have disability, she doesn't have welfare, she doesn't have her ID. So when she gets out of the hospital, bring her here and we'll start the process. We'll get you housing right away and we can get her housing somewhere else and we'll try to keep you together close, like in the same neighborhood so you can see each other and we want to try to keep you close to Bushwick so that you can get to your boat. Um, so, you know, I said, fine, whatever, fill out the forms. I'm going in today at 12 o'clock. I had to go back into Manhattan. The cops drove me into Manhattan from here and took me right to the place. They were like, look, if you weren't with us, you would have had to wait for days and you wouldn't even got to talk to this guy and da 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 da. I pulled a lot of strings for you. I'm like, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. That's why I'm going with you because I know I will get to this, you know, get right in. And uh, so, you know, they're talking to me about a place, I don't even know where it is, some kind of safe haven thing where there's no staff on site, it's private residences, there's somebody else or other people living there too, you get a room, you gotta buy your own food, make your own food, and you gotta pay for your own transportation. I'm like, there's shelters where they give you food and pay for your transportation too? Wow. But anyway, I'm like, okay, cool, you know, I got food stamps, I can figure it out. But I don't really want housing yet. That's the whole thing. I'm not trying to get housing yet, but I, I told them again and again, I got this thing with CUCS, so they called them up. I signed the papers and got whatever paperwork they had. I've been trying to get long-term supportive housing for people with mental health issues for myself and my wife together. But I'm gonna talk to the guy today and you know, if this is a pathway to to getting what I need for both of us, then I'll walk it. Uh, what I didn't want to do is give up yet and just walk away from all this because I love this. You know, even though it's it's sucking the life out of me, even though it's stressful, even though it's it's hard, it is the most rewarding thing I have done in 
my life. Well, maybe not my entire life, but yeah, you know? And uh, that's why I'm busting my ass to try to keep it somehow. This video is getting way too long. Um, thank you all for watching. I will keep you updated on what's going on. And uh, wow, it looks cool in that picture, doesn't it? Big old boat. <laughs> God is so good sometimes, really. Thank you, Lord God, and thank you. Thank you, people, for watching. Thank you for helping, and thank you for caring. God bless you all.